Hello everybody, it's FCD Medhaven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at a Tier 8 French Medium. It is a release um, that came up a few weeks ago at the time of me recording this uh, video, and I'll tell you guys right now, I'm really enjoying this tank quite a bit. It's got mobility, it's got a decent gun, same as the um, AMX M449, you know, the uh, Tier 8 heavy tank of the French, so basically, identical gun, you know, I kind of already have an idea how it handles, and... If anything, this tank has actually surprised me, even though it doesn't look like it has a whole lot to offer. Other than that, let's go ahead and start diving into the statistics here. Uh, there I am. I am huge. I don't know if I want to leave myself there or not. I might not. Because I'm huge. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, other than that, let's go ahead and dive into this. Starting off, 8,400 gold if you want to get your hands in this tank, if you're looking to purchase it. Um, other than that... Let's go ahead and jump into the gun statistics here. 232 penetration, uh, 263 on the premium, and then 50 uh, millimeters of penetration on the high explosives, with 300 across the board and 400 for your high explosives. Um, along with that, you have AP, and then you have APCR. Uh, 1,250 hit points uh, currently with the most recent release to the game, the Centurion AVRE. Uh, this tank has been struggling a lot whenever I end up against those just because there is nothing that you can really do to them. Um, whenever I do the review of the AVRE, however, or unless I already have done it and it's already up, then I guess it's completely useless of me to mention it in this video. I'm going to be going over a couple of weak spots that I have found out how to be able to take it down a little bit easier. Uh, 65 top speed and then 23 in reverse. This thing is highly mobile. That reverse speed allows you to peak ridge lines and handle it well. Along with that vision range, you're looking at 380 meters. I do recommend using coded optics along with um, situational awareness on this on your crew and for your equipment so optics and situational awareness will bump you all the way up to 486 meters of view range without using ventilation and that's also with born leader uh, still concealment detectability range 376 at base uh, 353.36 on still currently with my build i'm running a camo build i'm at 291 still concealment and my moving concealment is 299.74 so Let's jump down right here, and uh, here I am being a Muppet. There we go. Sorry if it's a little bit blurry. I've noticed that myself, and I'm kind of like, there's not a whole lot I can do. Just zoomed in. Um, so 6.919 rounds per minute. Currently with the loadout that I have, I have 8.48 rounds per minute on mine with the uh, rapid loading and gun rammer. Uh, module damage 135. This is a 100 millimeter caliber gun. It's not a 105, it's a 100 millimeter. Um, high explosive blast radius 1.76. Uh, damage per minute 1,857 damage per minute. Currently mine is sitting at 2,544. Penetration of 500 meters, 205, 253, and 50 millimeters. Uh, max ammo speed, we're looking at 1,000 on your standards, uh, 1,250 for your premium, and 1,000 on your high explosives. Uh, your standards at 1,000 is actually, it's a comfortable spot to have. It just, it makes it a little bit easier to lead your shells and everything else. Along with that, the 1,250 just for a little bit of added bonus. Um, reload time, 9.7 base reload time. Uh, with my build, you're going to be able to get it down to 7.07. .07. Uh, aim time is... 2.1, my aim time currently is 1.93, get a little bit of a bonus on there, 50 round capacity, so far with the reload and the way that the tank's been acting, I have not had any problems with running out of ammunition, or having really any problems with the ammunition loadout, honestly, 50 rounds is enough to take the a decent amount of standard ammunition and a healthy amount of premiums if you end up against the uh, higher tier opponents, tier 9s, tier 10s, accuracy at 0.36, my accuracy currently is sitting at 0.29, Honestly, this is a really comfortable accuracy. If you guys don't want to, you don't need vertical stabilizers on this. Um, personally, I would recommend using um, snapshot for your turret rotation. And accuracy during movement, during turret rotation, 2.46 is pretty bad. Um, accuracy during movement, they currently do not have it posted here. Mine is sitting at 3.41. That is with a crew equipped, so I do not know the base statistics of this. That is something else I'm going to be wanting to take into account whenever I go over this. But right here we're looking at 3.41 on uh, accuracy during movement. Uh, up next, 11 degrees of gun depression makes this thing extremely versatile whenever it comes down to ridgeline fighting and just handling opponents that are 
you know, below you. It gives it an upper hand advantage on those ridge lines with that extra degree compared to most other tanks. Elevation of 15 degrees, it will struggle a little bit on maps like Cliff or really any map that kind of requires you to aim up a little bit or if you're, let's say you're fighting on uh, El Haloof and you have to aim up a hill, make sure that you're using your gun depression, not your elevation on this tank. Along with that turret armor, looking at 150 in the front, uh, 40 on the sides, and then 30 in the rear. So not exactly the greatest amount of turret armor, but we'll be jumping into an armor model here in a moment to show off the turret armor. We're going to be comparing it to a couple of gun types. Uh, starting off, it will be compared against a... I believe it is a 100mm. It's on the same gun, but it's going to be from the CS-53. Um, primary position for the gun. Like Seriously, I don't even know why they include this. It's a fully rotating turret. Uh, so horsepower, looking at 680 horsepower, power to weight, we're looking at 24.29 horsepower to ton, uh, top speed forward, uh, fire chance of 15%. Currently, I have experienced a couple of fires in the time that I have been playing the tank, and, uh, I guess we can go over to Watt Stars real quick, uh, grab me real fast. I have not exactly put an absolutely outrageous amount of matches inside of the tank. It's been a minute since I played it. Uh, I have put a total of 21 matches inside of the uh, MX-30 Proto right here. Only 21 with a 61.9 uh, win rate damage ratio. Uh, sitting at 2.15 and then kill death ratio at 2.15. These are identical. Talk about just consistency across the board there. Okay. Uh, track traverse speed, 36 degrees. I do feel like this is lacking a little bit. I, Whenever I was playing the tank and I realized that it felt slow whenever you're trying to get up and go. It feels a little like there's a lot of friction in the way. Uh, terrain resistance, 0 0.9 for hard. Um, 1 for medium and 2.0 for soft terrain. I do recommend off-road driving on this tank just to help with that off, like the soft terrain. The second you hit it, it becomes super sluggish. And with the light armor that you have, you need access to that armor. Other than that, let's go ahead and jump into the armor model here. Uh, we're looking at a really decent gun mantle. That's actually what I really like about this tank right here, is that you get 270 millimeters effective armor, 300 millimeters in some spots, just really good gun mantle. And it's kind of what you're using to help block shots because not a lot of people are going to aim far left or far right and want to hit the outskirts of your turrets or even aim at the lower part or the top. But top armor here, we're looking at 25 millimeters, so it's not exactly the greatest. Uh, collision models. Up in the top, we're looking at 20 millimeters. On the sides, we're looking at 40. 40 underneath, we're looking at 15. Lower plate, 65. Beneath that, we're looking at 60. 70 millimeter plate here, and then jump up to 60 millimeters on the actual effective top plate but one of the biggest things is is that against any heat rounds or anything that's actually above 268 this part of your armor is not as effective but it here's against 290 heat pin it's not that well armored at all until you use your maximum gun depression but even then your top armor is still only 300 millimeters effective, so against tier 10s, 340 heat pin, or even against 300 millimeters of heat pin, you will be finding the sink to struggle just a tad bit. So what I recommend is actually, as you come over a ridge, to try and peak it at a slight angle and only expose your frontal armor if you're able to, and then barely have your turret poking over. Your hatch does disappear whenever you're utilizing your gun depression, so primarily the only thing that they can really get an eye on is your gun mantle. Um, a lot of standard rounds are going to be getting absorbed by your gun mantle, and if people are aiming out in the sides here, they will be able to pin this, or getting hit by a Centurion AVRE with high explosives flat on, and just, yeah, problems. Lots and lots of problems. Um, other than that, though, tank's not too bad. Uh, one big flaw, though, if you are going to be utilizing gun depression, and you are going to be trying to pull over, and you overextend just a tad bit, you will find yourself in a big problem. With the Under Armour here above the tracks, it's only 15 millimeters, which means that any gun in Tier 6 is going to be able to overmatch this. So keep that in mind if you plan on peaking, because this can lead to perma-track plus damage and result in death. Unless people are firing heat rounds, even then you have a chance for it to be absorbed into the tracks, but it's not guaranteed. More than likely it will just go straight through and direct impact into the lower part of the armor here. So that's always fun. Other than that, let's go ahead and dive into some gameplay. Um, 
yeah, game, we'll do one match. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, Arctic region, and then we'll jump over to uh, the statistics of the tank after this. Well, my my build, my perk loadout, and everything that I've been using. So, I can say that Blade is liking this tank a lot. Um, he's been telling me that it's actually becoming one of his new favorites. I asked him if he would be uh, willing to actually fill something out and send it to me over Discord before I did the review. But I don't want to take too long on this one. kind of want to get it out as quick as I can, just because I actually enjoy this tank. And I would recommend anyone who's looking to get their hands on it to go ahead and go after it. And just... It's got a lot of speed, and this match right here, it's showing off the absolute aggression. Along with the decent concealment, we didn't get spotted until we hit this last little section here. Over 291 still concealment with 300 moving. Um, it, it's kind of in that little bit of a decent amount of concealment, but it's not the greatest. Uh, along with that, Bean Steer, uh, Bean, S-T-E, uh, 952R. I hope that you are enjoying the uh, APA Mix 30. Uh, and hope you enjoyed that giveaway from the last review. Uh, okay, uh, here I am just being a Muppet. Talk about some pros. The power to weight being at 24 makes this tank extremely nice. Uh, against 120 millimeters, you're still going to be able to side scrape with the 40 millimeters of side armor. Uh, your top armor is essentially auto ricochet on the 60 millimeter plates in the left and right against AP and APCR almost no matter the angle frontally, as long as you're maintaining a frontal approach. And you have a little bit of gun depression, nothing too crazy. Even flat on those side plates are still auto ricochet. You can slightly side scrape against standard rounds, but it's only if they're going to be firing standard or APCR. However, be careful and remember that your lower armor of the tracks is only 15 millimeters that will play against you quite a bit. Um, the mobility of this tank, I find to be absolutely phenomenal. And then with the decent gun that it has, you need to give this gun a little bit longer on the aiming whenever you're actually taking time to, to place your shots. This is not a tank that's going to be snapshotting a whole lot. You want to make sure that you're taking time to get those shells out. There's really no point in rushing these. It can work to rush them, but I don't recommend it. I've missed a lot of them by rushing my shots, and it's played against me quite a bit. Uh, one statistic that I would love to see consoles start to display over whatever we're taking a look at tanks would actually be the weight of a tank. I would love to see the weight of a tank. However, the only way that you're going to be able to see the weight of the tank is by going over to PC and finding it yourself there, which the max weight of the tank is uh, 2,000, well, 28,000, uh, yeah, 28,000. So, do not ram inside this. I mean, looking at the tank, it's... Yeah, there's no point in ramming. Controlled impact, no point. Spa liner, uh, the armor is too thin to make spa liner be effective. Primarily, um, in my opinion for this tank, using a concealment build is going to be the best way to go. Because the moment that you're spotted, you want to try and not be spotted. Your goal is just to try and stay as hidden as you possibly can. Because the moment you're spotted, you have no armor against all opponents unless you're utilizing all 11 degrees of your gun depression. So, this match, it's showing off the aggression. How fast this tank is capable of moving around and getting into position. Uh, along with that, the 232 millimeters of standard pin, I find to really help this tank in a lot of scenarios. And if you're free to play and you want to make some silver, the 232 standard pin in this tank will help you make quite a bit. Especially since the standard rounds have a, sh a shell velocity of 1,000. They're decent rounds and they get the job done. Not to mention, they are actually on the higher end of tier 8 standard penetration at 232 millimeters. And they're APs as well, which means that they have the 5 degrees of free adjustment on contact. And here, you can see that the armor, whenever you're not utilizing gun depression and enemies are above you, it's going to be easy penetrations, especially with that 20 millimeters and 25 millimeters of top armor on the turret. It makes it real easy to go above this. And if you ever get the opportunity and you are above it, Try and get a high explosive into the roof of it. You will penetrate and do maximum damage as long as you have 60 millimeters of plus of penetration. And I am being up at taking a look real fast. Yeah, if you're above it, it's only 
40 millimeters effective armor, 35 millimeters effective armor at the angle I was at against them. So yeah, that'd be an easy pin. And here we go, VK4502. I wanted to try and rush back to the base, and um, the VK kind of caught me out, and he decided to rush in. And there we go, we get taken down. But it's alright though, because this was supposed to show off the aggression. Uh, Arctic region, we took over that side of the map, and we just went in as fast as we could and just decimated it. There's Blade putting in a shell. I do believe Blade survives. I, don't, I can't remember. No, we didn't pause it. I'll let this one play out. But, yeah. Cons? Oh, there's quite a few of those. Uh, but other than that, tank is phenomenal. It performs extremely well. The cons, though, would be it's lightly armored. Uh, for a newer player, I would not recommend this just because it does have a little bit of a higher skill cap in my opinion. It will play against newer players quite a bit. So the best way to go at this tank is like you have a little bit of experience with like light tank action. You know some bushes around the map to use. Um, you know a few trees that you can knock down, kind of utilize that. That would be about the time that I would say to jump inside this tank. And here I am being a Muppet because I said we would take a look at my setup after that match. It's alright. Sorry. If you want to see the setup, go to the very end of the video. My problem. I'll... I'll I'm a Muppet, all right? Leave me alone. It's, uh, it's what? Tuesday? It is Tuesday. The brain's still starting. Monday was yesterday. Yes. Now, the tank itself, with the way that the gun handles, you have really bad movement accuracy, and your turret rotation accuracy is really bad as well. Uh, your base statistics, whenever you're not moving, that .36 getting down to .29, primarily Whenever this tank is moving at all, its gun plays against it a lot. So, there is that. So, perk-wise, I would I would say steady aim would be a way to go. Um, but primarily, snapshot during turret rotation. Because that bloom, it really likes to jump out. And currently on my build, I do not have snapshot. I have steady aim. And I would prefer snapshot. Now... If you don't, if you're not really worried about your DPM inside this tank and you kind of want to help guarantee penetrations, I would say to not use a gun rammer and swap it out, well, hold on, advanced loader, because they changed the name on it forever ago, which makes a lot of reviews now completely useless because people are going to be like, what's a gun rammer? Sorry, you know, 6.0 is still affecting all of us, you know, two years later. Um... But vertical stabilizers will help keep that bloom tight on all rotation and movement. It'd be a good thing to probably throw that on instead. I'll probably have to give that a little bit of a try and I'll leave a comment down uh, in the comment section of this video if it turns out to be really beneficial to have that on. Um, but primarily, for me, this tank, I will find myself playing it quite a bit just because of its mobility. But the recommendation for new players, I would not recommend this tank in the slightest for newer players but for let's say like um about an average player base or mid-range you know mid-range to average or even like high unis this would be a very good choice to pick up um for uh, the average player this tank right here would be absolutely fantastic for making silver because you're gonna be able to utilize your standard rounds not have a lot of problem you know you already have a little bit of map awareness and you know where to go and you'll be able to play to its um strong suit Currently, I am not using any of my gun depression because I'm kind of using my concealment to get some shots in and relocating a tad bit. But currently, this match is not going extremely well. So far, up to 678 damage. Yes. And uh, I've already taken a shell. Right here, I'm telling Blade that we should rotate around the right side and prevent them from coming over. So, the mobility of the tank just allows you to really relocate all over the place. And it's one thing I will give the um, Alt Proto AMX-30, that its mobility is absolutely fantastic and probably one of the best things that this tank has, along with 11 degrees of gun depression. And here we go. I do believe we're still loading standards. Yes, we're aiming for the hatch. And we missed the hatch. We're going to start loading in the premiums here. Back off. Dreadnought, TNH-105. I do believe right here we're going to go after the TNH. We're going to put a round straight to the top armor. Um, the TNH-105, that is, in my opinion, one of the better tier rates in the game for Tech Tree, other than the T-32 and Tiger-2. Tiger-2 is absolutely amazing, but TNH-105 is kind of that all-round fantastic armor all over the place. It just has 
As long as you know how to use your armor correctly, TNH 105 is one of the best tier 8s in the game, in my opinion. Now, you can see that we're kind of in a bit of a pickle right here. Aim low, take your time to aim, let's guarantee those shots, can aim for the lower part of the gun. Hatches? Rotate? Okay, there we go, 303. One thing about this tank, though, it, whenever the low rolls hit, you fill them. Because those low rolls, I believe the lowest I've seen is like 200... And 50 to like 240 damage. I've seen a couple 269s. Nice. But it, it is what it is. You know, we, it's RNG. If we had mid rolls the entire time or we did our average or loaded dice the entire time, that would make this tank really good. But other than that, you know, taking seven seconds to load 250 damage is not too bad because I play a lot of Russian tanks. So, yeah. And then your high rolls, I have seen them. My highest roll, I believe, I've seen has jumped all the way up to like 360. It's like 370 damage. So it's got some really decent rolls that it can get out for damage. Uh, penetration wise, I, I do find it lacking a little bit against tier 10s. 263 though is not bad, but it is APCR. If it was AP at 263, I would say that it's a fantastic premium round. But since it's 263 APCR, it's okay. I would prefer like a 280 heat pin or even 270 heat pin. That would make this tank play a lot better against tier 10s. But with the 263 APCR, I do find it struggling a little bit against tier 10s with haul down fighting. You do better against tier 9s because a lot of them have got weaker gun mentals that you can put 260 pin through. Uh, tier 10s on the other hand, they got really thick gun mentals and you're going to find yourself struggling with different weak points that you need to look for. So far up to 3,522 damage, 240 ricocheted, a little bit of block damage, nothing crazy. Go, take some time, send a shell and we missed. Uh, so far it's 3 to 5. And what was our heavy tank? I cannot remember what the heavy tank was in our team. Enemy damage, blind shot into the dragon. That was an absolute fantastic shot. And there we go, super fast in that. Okay, TNH 105 1000 taken down. There we go, take the time to aim. A little bit of extra time, guarantee it. Type 62 is an absolute fantastic light tank, tier 7. Brewmark, it is a 1 versus 4 scenario right now. You guys can take a guess at how this goes. I'll tell you now, this tank, I do enjoy it. But, there's a couple of things that play against it. Low armor, but a lot of mobility. But the low armor will play against you every single time. It requires you to think and use a lot of what you know about the game to your advantage. There we go, a little bit of a blind fire through the bush there, unspotted. Be well, not the bush, but the fallen tree. The trees gonna provide a little bit of concealment here. Trying to, find, trying to see if I can try and find a shot. I didn't really want to risk taking the shot underneath because I felt like that was not going to hit at all. He was just going to completely miss. And here we go. Falling, falling, thinking about it. And right here, you guys can see what I mean about the traverse speed. It feels like it's sluggish. And there we go. Low armor, high explosive derps. Oh, I was excited about this match. I was telling Blade, I have this in the bag because everything is one shot. And the next thing you know, I get shot in the rear with an HE from a tier 6 derp for 740 damage. You can imagine how that made me feel. Not that well. I was pretty sad. I was ecstatic about it, and it completely went downhill and did not work out the way I wanted it to. Um, but Blade, um, Blade has found himself really enjoying this tank for what it has to offer. Good mobility... Um, really weird looking tracks. They're not generic. They got rubber. Uh, just like the, uh, the lower tier 9. Uh, but that one has tires. I love the, I love the Lorraine 40 ton. This is actually, this is a fantastic tank. Same gun. This gun's kind of used all over the place. If anything, I would love to see them make the Lorraine 40 ton into a tier 8 premium with, uh, less ammunition inside of the clip. Because that would make it absolutely fantastic. Other than that, let's go ahead and jump into my crew. So, commander-wise, we're going to be taking a look at skills. Born leader, rapid loading, six cents, situational awareness, muffled shot, camouflage, exp um, camouflage expertise, silent driving, track mechanic, and steady aim. Uh, rather than steady aim, I might be swapping it out for snapshot just to help kind of keep that bloom in a little bit tighter because with everything that we have on, we have born leader, which is going to be benefiting accuracy just a little bit, but nothing too crazy. It might, like, drop it down to 0.34 of that by itself. Um... 
Other than that, equipment-wise, we're looking at optics, loader, and uh, camouflage net. And the fourth equipment slot, that does not exist and only benefits one tank class in the game. Known as artillery. Useless. They take a game mechanic and turn it into a piece of equipment. Thank you, Wargaming. Absolutely fantastic. Other than that, this tank, I would recommend it. But if you are newer to the game, or let's say you're a tank collector. Tank collector, of course you're going to buy the tank. But if you're newer to the game, or you're looking into getting this, I would not recommend it unless you have an idea how haul down fighting works or how to utilize your armor to the best of your ability using 11 degrees of gun depression or even using 8 degrees of gun depression. Learn positions on the map before you pick up this tank. And once you do that, you'll play this tank extremely well. So, other than that, you guys have a great day, afternoon, night, whatever time it is for you guys. For me, it is late. I am tired. Uh, long day at work. I have a lot of slivers inside my hands, and I'm going to go pull them all out before I pass out. So, guys, have a great time. I'm out of here. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. Fantastic tank right now. Sorry, new players. Don't get it.